Hi, uh, I'm Holly Greenberg and I'm here to give you a real quick tutorial on how to tint, transfer, and carve your woodblock for the steamroller event. Okay, so you guys are going to be using a sheet of MDF. Yours is going to be much larger than this, but we'll start with this uh, for today's demonstration. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is tint the block. This is not necessary, it's just optional, but I think that it makes for a much easier surface for carving so that you can really see where you've carved and where you haven't carved. In fact, this block here has been carved, but I'm not even sure you can see where the carving marks are. Um, it's it's uh, much more difficult to see where you've carved and where you haven't than when I show you what to do. Next. So what I have here is some India ink. And I've mixed it with water, just 50-50, and that's what I'm going to use to tint my block. And I have a little rag here, and what I'm going to do is just rub it in to the block. This is actually a little strong. I would say um, a little less ink and more water because this is super black. What I'm going for is kind of a medium gray. Yeah, a little bit more like that. If you don't have India ink, you can use watercolor, you can use some really diluted uh, acrylic paint. Just make sure that whatever you use, it's not going to change the surface of your block. So if you use acrylic paint, don't let it get really thick and plasticky. I just want to tint the block. Okay, block is tinted. Let's put that aside. grab a block that's already tinted and dried. Okay, so now it's time for me to transfer my drawing to my tinted block. This is my drawing. You can just stay the camera oh, over here. Oh. <laughs> I'll bring everything here. Okay, then. Okay, that's um, my lovely videographer, Jane McCoy, Hi. super <laughs> SU student. So here's my drawing and I need to transfer it to the block. But before I transfer it, the most important thing to do is reverse your drawing. Okay? Because in this process, whatever you carve into your block will print in the reverse. So I just scanned this into the computer, and then I reversed it, made it the mirror image, and I printed it out. And in fact, the only reason that it has this stupid text here is just so that you can see what happens if you don't reverse it. Um, if you don't care about your image being a mirror image when you print it, then it's fine. But text can be an issue if you don't reverse it. Okay, so the next thing I do is I, um, I just draw on the back of my drawing using a uh, chalk pastel. You can also use regular chalk. There's any number of things that you can use to make your own homemade transfer paper. Chalk pastel works pretty well. Um, in printmaking, we use something called iron oxide, but I didn't think anyone had it. Basically, you just need to make a homemade transfer paper. And I recommend using a light colored chalk if you have tinted your block. If your block is untinted and it's just the regular MDF color, then you should use a darker chalk. Okay, I'm just going to give it a little shake because there's some extra dust on there. And then I'm going to tape it into place. Some tape. So you guys are going to be carving seven foot blocks, which means you're going to have a giant seven foot photocopy that you're taping down. You can get those made at a coffee center. Um, and what you might find is that one piece of chalk is not going to cover the whole uh, photocopy. So you may actually just end up using the chalk in the areas where there is an image to transfer. In other words, I have nothing to transfer here, so I didn't even bother putting the chalk over there. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, now what I like to use is a ballpoint pen, and I'm just going to go over the major lines of my drawing. In other words, I'm not going to redraw the entire thing. I just want to go over the bare bones of my bunny so that I have an idea of where the major parts are on the bunny. 
but I don't want to painstakingly go over every single line. I am going to redraw all the text because that's important that I get that accurate. Okay, so some has transferred. It's a little hard for you guys to see. Let me grab the other block where I already completed the transfer. And there, it's still pretty light. Now, the unfortunate thing about the chalk is that it will brush off. It's not permanently fixed on there. So what I'm gonna do now is use my Sharpie to go over these lines. And that's going to stay on there and not flake off. And you'll notice when I'm drawing with the Sharpie, I'm trying not to smudge the chalk with my hand here, but rather carefully go over my information. All right, so that's enough of a guide for me to start carving my bunny. I will use this as reference, and now I'm going to grab my tools. So your wood carving toolkit will have a variety of gouges, V-groove, a V-gouge is a V-shaped groove, and a U-gouge. And if you've never used them before, the most important thing to remember is to carve away from you. So as I'm carving, I'm using two hands. The right hand is holding the tool and applying pressure, and the left hand is helping to direct the movement. And also to apply, this finger is applying a little bit of pressure also. So I'm always carving away. If I need to make these little marks right here, I'm gonna rotate my block and carve away again. Now, if you have a seven foot block, you're not going to rotate your block. What you're going to do is move yourself around the block so that you're always working away from yourself. So I'm depending on this V groove because it's giving me these fine little lines that I want. But if I want some bigger lines, I'm going to switch to the U. And you can see that this is a different quality line than the V. Now, this is a pretty small, tight image. My block is only this size. And again, you guys are working on blocks that are even bigger than this block. So you want to increase the scale of your lines. So you're going to need to get tools that are making lines that are more like this size. Or even, this is a 15 millimeter U gouge it's going to give you the ability to make lines like that. And this is uh, one of the primary tools that I've used in some of these areas, although I also use this tool. Okay, so just to show you what it looks like carved, there's the bunny carved. You don't have to go super deep. We're just going to be rolling the ink on the surface, so as long as you go deep enough that uh, the roller won't get the ink in there. It, you don't have to dig all the way through your block. These are quite shallow lines. And that should do it. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything else. <laughs> okay, thanks.